CBS News national correspondent Dave Malkoff joins us live now from Houma, Louisiana, where Jess just mentioned. Dave, you're about 50 miles outside of New Orleans, and to our point, people helping people there, you see the sandbags. Reed, just seconds ago, a huge dump truck came here delivering almost two tons of this sand. It, there was no sand left, really, and folks here are carefully filling up each one of these bags that weigh about, would you say like 25 pounds each or so? Yes, sir. And then where are you taking them? I'm taking these uh, to this uh, job site right here at the Civic Center where we're still trying to recover from, uh, from Hurricane Ida, so we're doing the repairs over here. Hurricane Ida was three years ago, and we're talking to a lot of people here in Houma who are still recovering from that. They still have lots of stuff outside of their house and they don't have any way to protect that because their garage is full of stuff that they have already been protecting for three years from this last hurricane, which was a Category 4, and now we've got a Category 2 coming in. We've got the Coast Guard right here, and they are filling up these bags of sand to go over to their homes because they are actually going to ride this out here. It is a hurricane that you need all the essential services here. We talked to one woman who works in the maternity ward. She worked all the way through Ida. She was delivering babies during Ida. And now she's gonna do the whole thing all over again, delivering babies through this one. That will be her shift as a scrub tech at the hospital over there. But Reed, I mean, if you look at these, these are very, very heavy. Where, where are these going? These are going to your house? Yes, sir. And then they've got their daughter working here a little bit, too. They've got people uh, using these half cones, putting the uh, sand through there. Pe people say that that may be a, a little inefficient for, for folks who are just coming here. You know, maybe people who are, uh, uh, you know, 50, 60 years old, and, the, and they're trying to just do as much as they can to protect their house. They've been filling it themselves. That's a little harder to use. You need a little teamwork to do that. But Homa is definitely not recovered from Hurricane Ida. And now here we are three years later where we're having another hurricane coming through. And Reed, what I would mention is that coming up uh, in the next hour, we're going to show you what do they do with the animals at the zoos mm. here on the Gulf Coast? What do they do with the penguins who are actually at aquariums here on the Gulf Coast? What do they do when you have a big hurricane coming this way? Well, we went to a zoo and an aquarium here in the Gulf Coast area, right in the path of major hurricanes during this season where we're right in the peak of it. And we will show you, and Reed, I will leave you with this, a lion-proof golf cart. You are about to see that in just a little bit, a custom built lion proof golf cart because if a tree comes down, the enclosure's broken, the lion gets out. How do they actually get that lion back into safety? All right, three things, Dave Malkoff. Number one, that is community and teamwork in action in our country. That's great. Also a master class in bringing a story to life. Thank you so much. Number three, that's one heck of a tease. We'll stay tuned for the lion in this broadcast. <laughs> All right, we'll when we it. come back, we want to Jeez. revisit prayer and preparations. You know, when hurricanes hit coastal cities, people are oftentimes advised to get out, to evacuate. But hurricanes are not just a danger for people. As Texas and Louisiana prepare for Francine to make landfall, CBS News national correspondent Dave Malkoff shows you how these zookeepers prepare to help Gulf Coast animals weather the storm. This is a drill. Weather services reporting hurricane level high winds. All staff is shelter and release. This is the rarely seen Houston Zoo firearms team riding in a custom made tiger proof golf cart. They're just gonna be checking the holding buildings to make sure everything is intact. The animals are still where they're supposed to be. While most people would run away from hurricanes, Kevin Hodge and his small team stay put. You never know what is going to happen. Some have firearms to protect people from big cats, apes, elephants, and rhinos, like 4,000-pound Indy. Any animal that could uh, cause significant trauma or uh, severely injure or, or kill a person. Their goal is to always recapture an animal without harming it or keep it contained in the first place. 
Take Hurricane Harvey in 2017. Dumping water, and we have never seen so much water. I believe it was 40 inches or, or more. No animals escaped or drowned because many, like the great apes, have moats around them to help manage the flood water. And the Houston Zoo has made some updates since Harvey, including two dozen generators. It's critical that they have air conditioning. It's critical that the red pandas have air conditioning. And it's critical that our keepers can go in and they have enough light to be able to take care of the animals. But the closer you get to the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, the more real the danger gets. We're on Galveston Island. See those pyramids back there? That's home to some animals who are not used to tropical storms. We have to worry about tropical storms and hurricanes here. Diane Olson cares for the king penguins at Moody Gardens Aquarium in Galveston, one of nearly 700 species here. Did you try to evacuate them one time? We looked into it with Rita. We actually tried to drive some of our venomous snakes and our ocelot to take it up to Houston Zoo, and it took several hours just to get about 10 miles. So the best thing to do is so just we just decided here. we are hunkering down. We do all the rainforest food prep in here. So Greg Whitaker rode out four major storms with Moody Gardens. Technically, we're inside a big glass pyramid, uh, but the pyramid is rated to 140 mile an hour winds. As far as I know, we've never had a broken panel. But during Ike in 2008, water did come inside. Upgraded pumps in the basement now keep water out and bring some in. It's about 80,000 gallons of, of natural seawater. Stockpiling food is also important. And in the freezer, we've got uh, pallets of frozen fish. Animals relying on people and their preparation to weather any storm. Dave Malkoff, CBS News, Galveston, Texas.